All right, hey guys, what's up? Uh, this is Brad from Roboflow, uh, here to do our first Roboflow live stream. Uh, I'm gonna do my best here to uh, use this new streaming software that I'm testing out. Uh, it might be a little bit rocky, um, but today what we're gonna do is we are gonna create a Blackjack basic strategy app. Uh, I haven't built this yet before, so you're gonna see this warts and all, uh, all the way from start to finish, but I thought it would be fun uh, to have you along uh, for the ride with me. Um, so basically I've got a deck of cards here uh, and I've got a computer vision model that I'll show you how to use. Uh, and the goal of today is to be able to take input from a camera, process it through a computer vision model, uh, have it tell us what cards uh, are part of the blackjack hand, um, and then basically use a table uh, to give us the desired outcome or, or the desired next move that we should do in the blackjack hand. So should we split, double down, hit, or stay? Um, and we'll, uh, we'll go through this together. Um, so without further ado, let's get started. Uh, I see that there's already some people tuning in for the live stream. Uh, so uh, I'll keep my eye on the chat here if you have questions as I go along. Uh, if there's any problems with like hearing my, my voice or seeing the screen, please uh, let me know and I'll zoom in or speak up or figure out the, the streaming software. Uh, again, this is a first trial run. If it goes well, we'll probably do more live streams like this, but hope, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Um, let me switch over here to my screen view. Um, okay, so uh, what we're gonna be using today is a model from Roboflow Universe. And so Roboflow Universe, you can get there from at universe.roboflow.com. This is our community site for computer vision models. So anybody can sign up for a free Roboflow account uh, and create a free data set. Uh, they can upload their images and then annotate them. Uh, and then once they've done that, um, they're able to share it with the community for others to use. Uh, so you can see we have a whole bunch of different um, you know, projects that you can start from. I like the rock, paper, scissors one. Uh, I really wanna create someday the world's largest rock, paper, scissors tournament. Uh, and it would be over Zoom. Start out with a bracket of like a million different people uh, and you know, you'd play and then it would go down to 500,000 then 256,000 uh, and we could use this model essentially to score each round uh, and then eventually crown the world champion of rock, paper, scissors. So maybe that'll be a future live coding demo. Uh, but today the model that we're going to use is this playing card model. Um, so this was contributed by a YouTuber, uh, Ritesh Kanji of Augmented Startups, who's awesome. You should check out his channel, by the way. Um, I, I know he just crossed 90,000 subscribers. Uh, so let's see if we can hopefully get him up to 100,000. And while, while I'm thinking of subscribing, uh, if you haven't subscribed to Roboflow yet, we'd definitely appreciate uh, a follow down there and, and a like on this video. Um, but Ritesh created uh, this data set of playing cards and released it on Roboflow Universe. Uh, if we go in here, we can um, check out what's inside of this data set. Uh, and he actually generated this all from synthetic images. So he took a bunch of playing card images and just overlaid them on different backgrounds uh, and put, I think it was something like 10,000 images in here um, and then trained a model with Roboflow on here. Um, and so uh, you can think of a computer vision model a bit like teaching a computer with flashcards. Um, so you can see each of these is labeled with um, the suit and the rank of the card. And by showing the computer vision model uh, these millions of times, letting it essentially guess the answer, uh, it can get better and better over time and learn to replicate this output. Um, so as I mentioned, um, Ritesh has already trained a model with Roboflow that we're going to use for this. Um, you can also download this data set if you want to train your own model. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is click try this model. And that brings us um, here to all the options that we have for ways that we can use this model. Um, so you can see if you click use curl command, this will give me um, essentially like a, a hosted API that scales up to infinity that I'd be able to use. Um, but for today, we're actually going to run on device. So we're not going to use this. Um, this is what you would use uh, potentially if you wanted to run something uh, you know, in a web server and, and process images that people uploaded or something like that. Um, we also have uh, a bunch of sample code for different ways that you can use this. You should check our docs at docs.roboflow.com to learn more. Um, and I, all those code samples are here in a bunch of different programming languages. You can also deploy to an NVIDIA Jetson or a Luxonis Oak. Um, the Oak is an awesome device um, that, that you can try out. 
Um, it's essentially like a Raspberry Pi specifically for computer vision with a built-in camera. Um, so yeah, I, I would uh, I'd definitely give that that a look. Uh, and the NVIDIA Jetson is NVIDIA's um, essentially Raspberry Pi with a GPU is a, is a way that you can think of it. Um, but for today, what we're going to do is use your webcam. And so this is something that RoboFlow has created um, that will let you use this model in a web browser. Um, so this is, this is using TensorFlow.js behind the scenes, but you really don't need to know much about that. Um, so here, I've got a webcam over here, uh, and you can see that if I put playing cards down, um, it'll use the model to detect what I'm looking at. Um, so it's not perfect. Like I said, it was trained on all synthetic data, and so, but it seems to work pretty well, even though these playing cards are like in the real world. Um, okay, so let's uh, go through some things that uh, I've noticed um, as we, as I've been thinking about how to solve this problem uh, of creating a, a blackjack basic strategy app. So most of these cards um, have two different labels um, for for the card. So there's one on the top left and one on the bottom right, um, but. There's also some cards, notably the aces, um, that have four different labels for the card. So they've got one in each of the four corners. Um, so if we're going to create a, a blackjack strategy app, we essentially want to go from this raw output of the model, which is identifying each different part of the card, um, to there's a nine, a two, and an ace. Um, so I think what I'm going to do, the first thing that I'm going to do is um, take this raw output of the model and combine all of the similar predictions together. Um, so both of these nine of spades, I think I'm gonna combine those together to just detect one card, and same thing for like the ace. Um, so one uh, drawback of that is that if it, like a casino is using you know, multiple decks and there might be multiple ace of clubs in there, um, that it wouldn't work with that, but we could, uh, <laughs> because because like if I had two cards next to each other that were both the ace of clubs, it would draw one thing around them if I'm combining all those predictions. Um, but for our purposes, we're only gonna use one deck of cards, so we can assume that um, all of the two of hearts are together on one card. Um, so I think that's the first thing that I'm gonna do is change this default um, like visualization of these cards to be identifying the card versus each individual um, example uh, of the, the different labels on the card. Um, so to do that, uh, what I do is I click this get code button up here, um, and that's gonna give me a zip file of a sample app uh, that I can use. Um, and it already like pre-fills my information into here um, to use it with my RoboFlow account. Um, so if I click download sample app, it's gonna give me a zip. Uh, and I'll download that and let's take a look at what is inside. So, got this over here. Uh, it unzips and it's called RoboFlow Customer Demo. And it's got three files. It's got a JS file, a CSS file, and an index file. Um, so I'm gonna open up a text editor here. So. I'm going to use Atom just because that's one that uh, I'm pretty familiar with and know all the keyboard shortcuts too. Um, so we're opening up the text editor here. And let's have a look at what we've got inside. Uh, while we're doing that, I'm going to close uh, this guy just because it's using all my CPU power and, and probably slowing, slowing some things down. Um, so let's go back into my editor over here. Okay, so as I said, I got, I got three different files. The index.html is um, pretty simple. It's just got uh, jQuery, Lodash, and async as dependencies, and then it loads in my roboflow.js dependency. And that's what's gonna do all the magic. I'll actually pull up the docs for roboflow so that we can see where this came from. Um, if I go over here to inference object detection and then down to web browser on device, it'll tell me all about this roboflow.js. Um, and so essentially like you just include this script file and it gives you access to this RoboFlow object that we're gonna use um, here to load our model uh, and get predictions and, and all that fun stuff. So I'll leave this up in case I need to reference the docs. Um, I wrote the code so I, I shouldn't, but it's actually been a while. Um, and then it looks like the other two things that I have are that reference to the main.css file and the main.javascript file, which we'll look at here in a second. 
And then inside of my body, I've got a video tag um, and a FPS counter. Um, actually, maybe before we look at the JavaScript, let's go ahead and start up a web browser here. Um, so I actually I have a, a node package that I like to use for simple things like this. So if I do sudo serve dash p80 dot, this is going to start just a web a, a static web server in uh, my current directory on port 80. Um, so here we've got localhost 80 is now serving this index.html file and the, the JavaScript. Um, so if I come back over into my web browser and copy paste that in here, let's see what we've got. So, okay, so I open this up. This is running that index.html we just looked at. The JavaScript is prompting me for my camera, which we'll look at in a second. So I'm gonna click allow and that's gonna load up the model on that other camera that I have over here pointing at the cards. This is gonna take a second to download and bootstrap the weights and that kind of stuff, um, but we should in a second start to see essentially the same thing that we were looking at previously, um, I hope. It's possible there's a JavaScript error, which would not be good. Ah, okay, so it's giving me a JavaScript error because my publishable key is malformed. And uh, that makes sense because I did not enter my publishable key. Um, so if I go back over here uh, and I click use your webcam, uh, my publishable key was in the URL. Um, and so I can add that. Um, and actually in this one, it's gonna want me to add it in the code. So if I open main.js, um, you can see that it wants my publishable key here. So I'm gonna copy and paste that from over there and it wants my model here. Uh, and so let's just grab that model ID also, which is this guy. So this is telling it um, to load specifically this card model um, that I wanted to use from Rootful Universe. Uh, it wants the version also, um, and you can see that was actually in the URL here. So we're gonna take that out and leave it here. So if I save that file and then come back over here and refresh the page, let's see if this works. So far so good, no errors. So now I think it's actually loading the model in the weights. Yep, and there we go. So this is now a live view of what the model is predicting from this camera view. And we got the same thing. We've got these, um, the, the boxes on each of the cards. Um, so let's go back and run through what this main.js does here. Okay, if you're not familiar with jQuery, there's gonna be some um, like shortcuts that I took here instead of using raw JavaScript, um, but it, it shouldn't be too hard to, to explain. Um, so essentially like if you wrap something in dollar sign, that means it's using jQuery. Uh, and this is a shorthand for when the, when the document is ready to, to go. So like the HTML is scaffolded, it'll run this callback. Um, so this is essentially the main part of the app. This is all, this is all the code that is running to uh, have that demo video that we just looked at. Um, so the first thing we're gonna do is grab the video element from the index.html. So let's put this alongside of it. Um, so we're gonna grab all the video elements and then take the first one. There's only one, so it's this guy. We're gonna set the camera mode to be environment. Um, this is uh, when you're loading webcam video into JavaScript. Uh, on a mobile phone where you have a front-facing camera and a rear-facing camera. Um, this is how you would select which one you want. Um, this means that if we are running this on our phone, uh, it's gonna use the rear-facing camera so that um, instead of pointing it at my face, it's gonna point it um, at, at the world instead. Um, you could switch this if you wanted to do something with a user's face, like like maybe you're doing a mask, no mask detector or something like that. Um, you'd want to switch this to user. Um, and then we're going to do a get user media call uh, and request the video and we don't need the audio. So once, that, once that's done, um, then we're going to essentially tell this video object um, that we want to uh, use our camera essentially. Um, so then down here, uh, this is where we just added our publishable key and the RoboFlow model um, into just a variable that we're going to use later. Um, and then we're going to create a promise. And this promise is going to say, okay, uh, load the model here that I, that I said I wanted to load. So the playing cards model, uh, authorize RoboFlow with my publishable key, and then 
when you're done, um, this load model promises uh, callback is gonna be done. So the two things that I'm gonna do are wait for the video stream to initialize, which is the start video stream promise, and the model to load, which is this load model promise. So promise.all means once both of those two promises resolve, um, then call this callback. And so what I'm doing is essentially waiting for the page to initialize. Then I'm gonna remove this loading class from the body, um, which we can look at the CSS here in a second. Um, that's actually what, when I loaded the page and it was black and white and it said loading model, that was actually just CSS. Um, so when the body has the loading tag, we just add some CSS uh, to the page and, and make some stuff. Uh, I think there's one more here if I look for loading. Yeah, so apply a CSS filter to, to make it grayscale. Um, so if go back here and I reload this page. You'll see while it's waiting for those promises to resolve, it says loading model. This is in uh, dimmed out and grayscale. And then once both of those promises resolve and the, the camera starts inferring, um, then it'll come to full color and remove that loading screen. That's because the body removed that class. So if I come back in here and manually type class equals loading, um, we'll see that it dims back out. And even though it's not loading, right, it's already got that stuff, this is just like a CSS trick to essentially bootstrap the page. Um, so I'm going to remove that back out and we'll go back to the, the full view. Um, so that's, that's this line. When the page is initialized, remove the loading class. And then we're going to call two functions. One is resize canvas, and one is detect frame. Uh, and we'll look at those. They're, they're defined below. Um, OK, so here we've got a couple of setup functions. We've got video dimensions, which is going to give us um, essentially just like the width and height of the video, which we're going to use to visualize some stuff. We've got a resize callback function. So every time the window is re resized, we're going to call this resize function that we're going to look at in a second. Essentially, that's just telling our video to be full size and the right aspect ratio and that kind of stuff. So I can demo that over here. If I resize the page, it actually resizes that stuff and it all stays kind of aligned. Um, so as our first like test to see like is stuff working, let's go in here and we see on line 88, this is saying, this is console.logging out video width, height, and dimensions. Um, so let's just say, like verify that this is working and say, hello world here. And if I save that file and then reload the page, then every time that's called, we should see hello world at the beginning of this guy. Just a sanity check that the code that we're changing is actually gonna change some stuff on the page. Um, so we'll wait for it to download those model weights again and initialize. Um, this has to load up everything into the, the browser's GPU. Um, so here we see hello world, um, because remember, we called uh, resize canvas here, first thing after things load, we called it the first time. And then we have a, a listener where every time we resize the page, uh, it's gonna call that again and recalculate out what the width and height are um, compared to the native width and height from the webcam. Um, so all this stuff is just kind of boilerplate. We, we don't usually need to, to change any of this stuff. Uh, I just wanted to do that for demonstration purposes here. So I'm gonna get rid of that guy. Um, so here's the render predictions function um, that's gonna get called by this detect frame function. So let's, um, we'll jump back to this in a second, but let's go down to detect frame. Um, Cause this is like the meat of things. Um, so if the model isn't loaded yet, which it should be because we waited to call this in, until those promises resolved, uh, we're just gonna like bail out and try this again here in a second. Um, request animation frame is essentially a function that says like, yo, uh, wait for just a few seconds or, or a few milliseconds um, so that um, essentially like if I called this again, I'm not just blocking my CPU. Um, this is the, the actual uh, kind of important part. So model uh, is what we loaded up here. Um, so uh, inside of this load model promise, uh, when it resolved, it returned back this model and I actually set um, what's essentially a global variable as the model um, in here. Um, and model.detect passes it to that model. So model here is what we told it we wanted to load, which was this um, playing card model from Riboful Universe, if you'll recall. Uh, and here uh, in our documentation, um, 
you can read about what model.predict does. So essentially you can pass in any image or canvas element or video element, uh, and it'll take the, the current frame of the video or the image that you pass it, and it will run it through our machine learning model, which again, this is the playing card model, uh, and it'll return back some predictions in JSON. Um, or I, I guess they're not even JSON, this is JavaScript, so these are just objects. Um, and so what it's returning back is an array of the things that it found. Um, so with those predictions, we're gonna render them, but let's actually look at what we're getting back. So if I come in here in console.log predictions, and then reload the page, um, then every single frame, uh, I'm gonna see what what's coming back from the model. So I should expect an array with, uh, what is this? Two, four, six, ten results. Um, one for each of the, the corners of these things that's getting rendered. Um, and in fact, every frame, uh, which this is only running three frames per second, uh, it, it should run a bit faster, but also my computer is now serving a web browser, uh, recording two different cameras and doing a live stream to YouTube. Um, it's going a little bit slower than normal, um, but even three frames per second is still like, Horrible. See, it would be work, workable for this blackjack app that we're working on. Um, and so you can see, let's say I remove this ace, um, we should go down from 10 predictions to six, which we do. And if I put it back, we'll get 10 again. So let's have a look at what's in here. So this is an array of 10 predictions and each prediction is gonna give us information about that prediction of where it resides on the video um, so X is the center point, X and Y are the center point. The width and height is how wide and, high and tall the prediction is. And then it's gonna give us the class. Um, so this is one of the ones for the nine of spades. Uh, the color that we should render it in, which matches um, like in Ritesh's data set here when you look at these things, um, they're visualized in different colors. Um, so it tells us just how to render it, how we're used to in the RoboFlow interface. And then the confidence level, which is how uh, confident is the model? Like how sure is it of this prediction? Um, so you can imagine like if I turn one of these cards kind of sideways, there's a certain point at which it's gonna like disappear, right? And so as it approaches that, it's gonna get less confident. And you can see that, ten of, that two of spades is turning into 10 of spades where it's like not quite getting it right. That's actually doing a pretty good job here. But maybe if I put my finger over part of it. We can get it to predict the wrong thing. Anyway, there's some sort of gradient between like, oh, I'm 100% confident this is the right thing and I'm 0% confident. Um, I, I think the default configuration, which we can look in here, is that we filter them out if they're below. Here. I think it's 0 0.4, but it might be 0 0.5. Well, we can find that out. Let's, um, I'm gonna turn off this uh, predictions because it's getting in my way. And also let's um, give my Google Chrome access to this model. Oops. So when we're setting the model, I'm gonna also set window.model equals model. And then from my uh, dev tools, I'm gonna have access to what I'm looking at here. Okay, so let's refresh this. I should stop seeing these predictions every frame come through. And, oh, I see it, sorry. I, I haven't been doing a good job of looking at the, the chat over here. Somebody says, what's the topic? What are we doing actually? So we're gonna create a basic blackjack strategy app. Um, so essentially we're gonna be able to point it at a hand of blackjack and it's gonna tell us whether to hit, stay, double down or split. Um, and so we'll, by, the, by the end of this video, uh, we, we should be able to, to have that all up and working. Um, okay, so over here, I now have a global object called model. Oops. And I have a few different things uh, that I can do with that. So I can call detect, which is what we were looking at, where we can 
get information um, from the model on what it thinks is in the image. I can set the configuration. I can get the metadata about the model that I loaded and I can get the configuration info. So since I didn't explicitly tell it, let's see what the defaults are. So model.get configuration. And here I've got my default threshold is 0.5. Um, so let's say I wanna do model.configure and let's make it show me all of its less confident predictions. So threshold, let's do like 1% confidence. And then now we're gonna start seeing a bunch of junk over here of predictions that it's not as confident in. Um, so maybe if I now put my finger partially over this, this model is actually pretty darn good. Like even, there we go, two of diamond. It still thinks this is a two of spade, even, there we go. Even with low confidence. Um, but here it's like rendering a bunch of the kind of like less confident stuff because I told it it only needs to be 1% sure to show us some stuff. Okay, so uh, a few minutes ago I said, first step is we're gonna combine these duplicate predictions into one card prediction. Um, so let's go back into the JavaScript and do that. So, oh, actually I'm gonna, I'm gonna walk you through uh, the rest of the, the code real quick. Um, okay, so when, when we detect something, we're gonna tell it, okay, next frame, I also wanna detect something. Um, so it essentially it's gonna run this every frame. I wanna render those predictions, which, which is what's drawing the box. And then I'm gonna set that FPS down here of how quickly things are rendering. Um, and then real quick, this render predictions function uh, essentially just goes over each of the predictions. Uh, sorry, it clear, clears its ca HTML canvas. For each prediction, it's gonna go through. It's gonna draw uh, a four pixel line around each prediction uh, here. And then it's gonna put uh, the text of the prediction at the top left. So four pixel line around the box, ace of clubs, ace of clubs, two of spades, two of spades. Um, and that's, that's all that the, the demo code does. So now we're gonna start actually coding some stuff. Um, okay, so to combine these together, I essentially wanna go from the 10 predictions that it's giving me down to four, one for each card, um, and uh, basically like draw a box around all of this stuff. So let's actually call this an object. Okay, so I'm going to convert from my array of predictions to an object of predictions. And the reason I'm going to do that is for each class, I'm going to have one entry in this object. So at the end, this class is going to look something like um, Ace of Clubs is going to be some bounding box with uh, X, Y, width, height. And then it's still gonna have my um, confidence level or, or whatever. But essentially I'm like gonna combine all these together. So let's hold that as like what our what our target is. And I'm gonna just, uh, I like using low dash. Uh, I'm just more comfortable with it. So we'll do underscore dot So for each of the predictions, uh, we're gonna run this function. I have P as the prediction. And so if predictions parsed for P dot, what was that called? Um, I'm looking for the, the key for the class name. I think it's class. Yeah, so P dot class. All right, so if this is the first prediction that we've seen of, of it, um, we're just gonna take the bounding box for it. And like, if we, only if we were only seeing like one example of the thing in the corner, um, that would be the thing that we want. Otherwise, we're gonna combine them together. So if we already have seen one of these, so like, let's say um, we're on here, the first one, like we saw this ace of clubs. All right, cool, that's now our bounding box. The second one we see, we wanna combine the bounding boxes together and draw a bigger bounding box. Um, so we're gonna take the existing one and we're essentially gonna um, 
average it together, which also we need to do So in order to average them, we want to do a weighted average. Um, so I'm just going to keep track of how many times we've seen this class. Um, OK, so otherwise, the old prediction is going to be what's here. And we're going to do. So we've got a bounding box, right? So old uh, B box. Let's say we're gonna do Are we gonna edit this in place or do we wanna construct something new? I think let's edit it in place. So this is actually going to be in the array still. So now this is going to go to two. So if there's two, I want to add them together and divide by two. But that's not going to work for the third one. So I think what I want to do is divide by two. I'm going to grab this format here, just so I have it on screen. Pretty sure this is how we do a weighting average, but this could be completely wrong. Do the same thing for the Y. So essentially, um, this is going to be take the existing one times one half plus the the new one times one half uh, for the X and the Y, and then the second time it's going to be take the existing one times two thirds plus the new one times one third. I think that's the math for doing a, a moving average, but we're going to see. And I'm going to do the same thing for width and height. these should stay the same. I could, I guess, at, uh, average the confidence as well. I think let's ignore that. It's the only thing that we're going to use to render are these guys. Um, okay, and so then instead of rendering predictions, I think we just want to render predictions parsed. Let's see. I don't know. I don't even know if this is going to compile, guys. So I'm going to reload this over here, and we'll see if this worked. And actually, I probably want to start here. So at least get some information about things. OK, so it's a start. Um, OK, I, I see what's wrong. OK, so we got the x, y position right but I averaged the width and the height, but actually I want to take the 
the external bounding box of the things versus the average of the bounding boxes. So I want it to actually grow, which just makes sense. Okay. So width and height were wrong, but X and Y were right. So X and y, y we can keep. Width and height, what do we want to do here? So we actually want to take width. We actually are going to need the top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And then we want to take the farthest, the, the farthest left, farthest top. Okay. So the top is going to be either the existing dot x minus dot height the minimum of that or that I think Okay, so instead of taking the moving average, once I actually have the top left, bottom right, I can just take the center point of that. Okay, so I think I got to divide by two actually. Should be y too, not x. Uh, Charles Herring's asks why the frames per second is only three. Yeah, I think it's because I'm running two different webcams and streaming at the same time. Um, also, my laptop is burning up. Um, usually, I'm seeing like seven to eight, um, which is pretty decent through for, through the web browser on TensorFlow.js. I also don't have like a CUDA GPU on here. Um, I'm using Apple's. Uh, Actually, I think they have an ATI in my laptop. It's like a four or five year old laptop. I'm dying to get the uh, M1X when it comes out in a couple weeks. Uh, so this is why. Left should be similar to this, and right should be similar to this. Except for this is going to be x. The x plus the width over 2. Okay, so now I think the x position should be the middle between the top and, or between the left and right. So that should be left plus right over two. The y should be top plus bottom Oops. over two. And then the the width should be left, right minus left, and the height should be bottom minus top. Let's see if that worked. <laughs> Charles, you asked about the FPS. I just saw two now instead of three. It seems to be slowing down as my uh, laptop heats up. Okay, let's see what we got here. 
Well, now I've got nothing. <laughs> Getting four predictions, which is good. That's what I wanted. But I must have done my math wrong. Not a number. That's fun. Okay. Let's see what I did wrong here. Ah, because these are all B box. Okay, so I have existing.y, uh, but actually it should be existing.bbox.y. So I think let's do. Um, so everything about this observation should be replaced. I'm just going to replace all and get rid of that one. And then, ah, shit. I mean, sorry, shoot the dot at the end, get rid of that one. And then the same thing for, actually I don't need this anymore. For P, it should be P.bbox.y. Except for P.class. That's always, oh, now we got bbox.bbox. It's always risky to do a file wide find and replace. I'm like 50% 50 50 on whether this is going to be a syntax error. But we'll go back and fix it if it is. Uh, somebody's asking in the chat if we can make a YOLO v5 model for face max. max to, mask detection in the next version. And actually, I think if you go on universe.roboflow.com, um, we might actually already have a face mask model. Um, yeah, so we got this mask wearing one. Uh, I can show you what that looks like uh, here in a second. Um, it's not actually with like webcam data, so it doesn't really do close when you're, do well when you're like really close up to the camera like I am now, um, but we can try it out. I think I'm gonna have to close uh, oh, by the way, okay, so it looks like we have the right uh, thing now. So for each card, um, it's got one prediction that's combining everything. So we're on the right track with this. I'm going to close out of this so that I can show you the mask wearing data set real quick. So here I can use my webcam to, to check this one out. This is going to load this other model. Um, and it'll do mask, no mask, which I have a mask in my pocket. Oh. <laughs> Uh, let's flip this guy up, look at me. So it's not great, no mask, mask, no mask, mask. It's fine, if I get closer, it like really gets confused here. I think it thinks everything's a mask, but not bad. Um, so you could do the same sort of thing. Um, yeah, maybe we'll do the next uh, live stream on mask, no mask and figuring out like maybe how to open a door or not open a door based on whether somebody's wearing a mask or like Maybe you can set up a buzzer or something. Um, but yeah, it should be a fun project. And this is something where uh, you can totally just go to universe.roboflow.com, find the mask wearing data set, uh, click use in your webcam, and then use the exact same steps that we're doing here to build whatever you want. Um, so let's open back up my server that I'm running. Um, my camera is gonna be uh, pointing at me now. But let's get it pointed back at the cards. Okay, so now we have transformed uh, these predi the predictions that come straight out of the model of each thing on the side. Oh, that's cool, because now I can block it out and it, it makes that prediction to one prediction per card. Um, so now the next thing that we want to do is, I think, sum up, like, what is the blackjack value for these cards? Uh, I think we've been sitting on these cards for long enough. Let's... Um, see what happens if we deal out like an actual blackjack hand here. Um, so I've got my deck of cards. So if we had an eight, oh, of course I deal blackjack. Uh, I, this one, I guess we we're just gonna say blackjack, like you shouldn't do anything in this situation. Let's, um, let's get something where 
the solution is not just win. Um, okay, so king and a six. I'm actually not sure. I think 16 we're supposed to hit. Um, let's look it up. So I'm just going to look up basic strategy, and this is kind of like what we're going to try and do. This looks like a good one. So essentially, we're going to... Oh, why is that so tiny? Oh, interesting. Um, these ones all say what with the dealer up card we're supposed to do. I don't know how we're going to integrate into that. Let's maybe say... So if the dealer up card is a 2 and you have a 10, you should double down. If the dealer has a 2, you have a 9, you should hit. Dealer up card. So I think we're going to need some way to enter what the dealer up card is. I was thinking we would just point, so here, we had 16. I think we're going to need like a, a UI down here to say like what the dealer up card is. So otherwise you're going to have to point it at the dealer. Okay. Well, first things first, let's, let's figure out. So the first thing that we need to know is what our hard total is or our soft total. Um, and to do that, we just need to sum up our cards. Um, okay. So basically what we need is what we just sent our, um, Predictions parsed, which is this guy. Um, okay, so so. A soft number means we have an ace because that can be either a 1 or an 11. And our total is going to be the sum of the cards. So for each card, total, okay, so... So I I think this is going to get us the right total and the right whether it's soft or not. And so if soft, let's just console it out, log this out for now. Okay, so um, we're going to print out in, in the Chrome DevTools um, what the value of our hand is. And this is what we're going to need for our basic strategy over here. Um, we need to know whether we have a hard or a soft and what, what the total value is. Um, oh, interesting, pairs are listed on the back of this card. So we're going to have to figure out... is pair, and that would be, uh, 
let's see. So is pair actually is only if we have two cards and we want the rank of cards zero equals cards one. Okay. So if we have a pair, we're gonna print something different out. They're gonna be the same. So that'd be like a pair of aces, pair of twos. So I think this is all gonna work, except for I have these three magic functions that I just put in. Is an ace, get value of card, and rank of card. Um, so let's define those. I'm gonna open this guy up in, in the right split so that I can put them alongside each other. So these are gonna take a string and return either a string or number. Function rank of. Let's just return ace for everything right now. Get value of card. And we'll return one for everything. Is an ace. We'll return true for everything. Okay. So I just stubbed these out, we'll fill these in in a second, but let's just check if this logic works. So everything should be soft because is an ace is true. Once it's true, then every other card, this part is gonna register. Is a pair should return true only if we have two cards on the table because it's gonna tell us our rank of is ace, should match for everything. And our value should just equal the number of cards on the table. So over here, let's go back and reload our page. So I, I'm expecting that's what's gonna happen is our, our dev tools is gonna tell us that we have a pair of aces with a value of two. Actually, I should probably print out all of these. Um, just so that we have access to them in our console. Um, oh, my computer is chugging. Okay, so we predicted that it was gonna say pair of aces because we have two cards. Um, let's reload and get our other variables that we just Okay, so we've got our variables. Soft is true because we're telling it that everything's an ace, that's right. Pair is true um, because there's two cards and total is true. So if I add a card, I should end up getting pair false total three, no matter what card it is. Let's see if that is correct. Okay, pair is false, total is three. Sometimes it's saying four, ah, it's saying four because this card is getting detected wrong. So I'm getting three of clubs sometimes and three of hearts. It's right when it gets to the same. Huh, wonder why that's the only one that it's... Oh, 
Okay, well that's gonna be tricky to work around. I think the actual solution to that is to improve this model with some real images instead of just synthetic images, but for now, we'll go with this. Okay, so the, the thing that I'm passing into all these functions is actually this 6H, 6D, KC. Um, so I think what we wanna do, let's see, it should always be, let's look at the, the model and just make sure, is it always two digits? I don't actually know, because it's 10. So what we wanna do is like lop off the last letter, which is gonna be a H for heart, C for clubs, S for spade, or D for diamond. And then we'll have numbers for most of them except for the face cards. Okay, all right, so I think what I wanna do is grab, lop off the suit, because we're gonna ignore the suit for now. So that should be easy. So rank of is gonna be Actually, do we even want, I think we should do it here. Um, card.class, Let, let's just do like card, uh, oops, suitless is gonna be the, oh no, rank of card.class. Well, this guy. Nah. All right, let's do it in these functions. So let's just make a function for it. Uh, I think if I split on empty string, let's verify this. So in my dev tools here, Let's do, oh shit, uh, I'm gonna do this over here, where I'm not printing something out every frame. Okay, so let's do like 10 of diamonds. I think if I split on empty string, that gives me an array of each of the things. So yeah, 10 of diamonds. And then what I wanna do is pop off the last one. So that gives me 10, that gives me the D, but what I actually want is the result, what is it, splice? Ah, well, let's not do it in a multi-liner. Okay, so characters is that, characters dot pop, and then I think this, is, okay, so this should give me 10, yeah. And so this should give me A. Okay, so I think this is what we're gonna use in our function. Essentially, we're gonna split it, which gives us an array of all the elements. We're gonna pop off the last one, um, which we don't, it returns back the thing we popped, but actually it removes it from the array. So we're gonna be left with an array with one and zero. And then we join them back together. And so that'll give us essentially the, everything in the string except for the last thing. Wait, why are we doing it this way? Let's just use substring. 10D dot substring. Zero. Okay, yeah, that's, I don't know what I was thinking. So we actually, this is all we need. Let's copy paste that into our file. Okay, so rank of, what do we wanna use this for? This is gonna be the, the human readable one. Okay, so.
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Jack, Queen, eight, King, Ace. Oh, one is Ace. All right, so here we're gonna go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, jack, queen, king, ace. And, oops. and then we want to return two, three. Okay, so this is gonna give us essentially the human readable version of this, of, of just the rank without the, the suit. Um, and then we're gonna use that down here. So like pair of aces, pair of twos. Is, is adding an S? So <laughs> sixes is gonna be weird. It's gonna be six S instead of sixes. Tens, jacks, queens, kings, aces. I think that's the only one where the plural is gonna be wrong, but you know what? That's fine for a live stream video. Um, okay, so we're getting the rank. It's a pair. If the ranks match and the length is two, that'll be right. Okay, so the next thing we need is value of card, which I think this is actually the same thing, except for this guy, we just need to re return the numeric number. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing, get value of card, but here... I'm going to return two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then all of these actually are 10. So let's just fall through. And then ace, we're going to return 11. But later on, we'll return that it's soft. Okay, and then I'm pretty sure this one is just suitless card equals equals A. Okay, let's take a step back and see. Okay, so for each card, get the value of the card. It's gonna return back the number, and then it's gonna add them together, and then soft if it's an ace. It is an ace, just means it starts with A. And we're going to return back here. Okay, I, I think we're good. Um, let's go ahead and refresh over here and see um, if we're printing out the right value. So this should be 20. No, no 22. It should be a hard 22. Hard 22. Got it. So if I remove this king, I should get uh, a pair of sixes. Pair of sixes. Oh, of course, that's the one where the plural is wrong. Um, okay, and then uh, steal something else. Oh, I need my other deck of cards. So we've got ace, soft eleven. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and this is blackjack. Actually, that's a new one. Soft twenty. We should we should have a special case for blackjack. Let's do that. Um, so. So blackjack means that the total is 21 and the length is two. So now we should re refresh this, and instead of hand value soft 21, we should see hand value blackjack. <laughs> I see uh, my co-founder Joseph is in the comments, and he said uh, we should have a special case for blackjack equals let's see some confetti effects. Um, that sounds fun. Maybe, maybe we can add that here in a second. 
Um, so cool. All right, we got hand value equals blackjack. Um, so we're good. Um, all right, so let's, instead of having this be just printing out in the console, let's add some UI to this. Um, so I, if we remember from earlier in the video, um, I already have some styling to like put stuff at the top of the video when I had the loading message. So if I add this class equals loading, then I had this like loading model at the top. Let's just um, do the same thing, but instead of that, let's put the text for what's here. So like blackjack or like soft 20 or something like that. And actually, um, let's check some other cards and make sure that we didn't miss any other edge cases. Okay, so, oh, you know what? I bet we should do something for bust. So this is 27. So 27 is more than 21 and the value should be bust. Oh, here's where that model is not performing great again. We're gonna have to improve this guy. Maybe that's gonna be another video, how to, how to make the playing card data set function better. Okay, so this instead of saying hard 27 should say bust. Let's see, so if, but you're not busted if you have an ace. Let's see, how are we gonna do? So you wanna take actually, so we're gonna leave busted there, but let's do, if it's an ace, What happens if we have multiple aces, right? So I have an ace. If I have three aces, that should be three, not 33. It's like a soft 33, but that's not really a thing. It's like a soft, it's a hard three or a soft 13. So I think All right. So So for busted and it's soft. That means there's a chance we can save this. So Let's keep, it, keep track of how many aces we have. So if we're busted and we're soft, then we need to subtract 10 and an ace if we have them.
No, we need that still. But actually soft. Oh, good point. Uh, somebody in the comments is saying that we need to account for whether we should split. Which actually, mean, it, it depends on the pair that we have. So I think we're gonna have to break down this custom is pair situation in here. But we'll do that in a, in a second when we're... So right now we're trying to figure out what is the state of things and then we're gonna have to implement this guy, which tells us what to do based on that state. Which I should actually look for probably the pairs to see if there's special cases. But for now, let's just make sure that we're not um, we're not gonna bust on a soft something, like a soft 27. So is this gonna infinite loop? No, because aces will always get to zero. Busted. So this isn't technically like the right thing here, but I named it poorly, but we'll see. Okay, Let, let's just see if this works. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it will, but I guess we'll see. So instead of hard 27, we should now see, oh no, this is still hard 27. I need an ace back. Oh no, this is gonna say bust. Oh, if we output it. So this should say bust. I should find an ace and let's see if our soft stuff worked. Hand value bust. So what do I want? I want like, I want to get to like 20. Well, let's just see this plus an ace should actually be a hard 18. Yep, so that works. And that plus a 10 should bust us. Okay. And then two aces. So like this is this is a soft 18, which we got right. Let's find another ace in here. So another ace should be soft 19. All right, that's right. So let's find find a two, and that should give us 21. Soft 21. Okay, all right, I think this is working pretty well. Let's look at that pair thing again. Will this give me a pair of aces? Hand value pair of aces, okay, all right. All right, so let's, um, let's make that UI that we were talking about. So I'm gonna grab this hand value pair of aces and let's just put this up on top so that I don't have to keep looking over here. So let's look at that HTML and see what was going on over there. Let's look at the CSS as well. Content. All right, I'm just gonna grab all this stuff because I think that tells me what I need. And let's do, um, we're gonna create an element with the ID hand value. And we'll put this here. It looks like we're aligning this at the top, centering it. I think it should just work, so. It'll start out empty. And then here, we're gonna do,
What's um with the bust one? Let's tell them what the total is too. And then I created this magic pluralize. Let's go ahead and add a function for that, which I'm gonna cheat here. Uh, and we'll do since we know what our values are going to be uh, if CLS equals six return sixes else return just an S at the end since we know that six was the only one that was screwed up and that was just kind of like bugging me um, okay, so if I refresh over here, we should now get our text at the top. So this should say a pair of aces up here. Uh-oh, pluralize is not defined. Did I spell it wrong? Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't save. Pluralize, pluralize. And I didn't save that guy. Wait, why is it not defined? Pluralize. Because I forgot the L. Oh, nice. Uh, somebody in the comments actually caught that before I did. Uh, awesome, thanks. Let's go ahead and refresh here. It's kind of a pain that this is slowing down so much. I don't know why that is. Okay, so we got a pair of aces. We got soft 16, that looks right. Soft 20, bust, I assume. Oh, hard 15. That <laughs> did better than me. Uh, is that right? Hard 15. So I've got 9, 13, 14, 15. All right, yeah. Looks good. Let's see. Let's deal out some more stuff. So I've got hard 10, hard 19. Cool. 7 and a 9. That's hard 16. Let's hit. Bust 26. Oh, it's detecting that wrong. There we go. 26. 5, 7, 13, 23, bust. Oh, when it gets really close to the edge, it doesn't detect very well. All right, cool. So now that I think, now that we have like what our actual values are, Let's go back and try and code not only like what the thing is, but what we should do. So that's where we're gonna go back. Actually, we're gonna need to know what the dealer up card is. Let's add that UI first. Um, let's see. I think what I'm gonna do, just do um, for the purposes of this demo, I'm gonna put ace through 10 on the bottom, and then you'll just have to click which one the dealer has. And then we'll read that to determine what you're supposed to do. Okay, so I'm gonna turn off this logging for now, for on every hand. Um,
And then the way that I like to create simple UIs like this is I'm just gonna construct it inside of the Chrome Web tool so that I don't have to like keep refreshing the page. Um, so let's go over here. Hmm. I wonder if it's gonna let me do this or if it's gonna, no, oh, not too bad, okay. So this is gonna be like dealer of card. And then I want an option. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I did it this way because I already have that value of for these, for ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, um, that we're, we're probably gonna be able to use. Duplicate, um, I'm gonna copy this just in case my browser refreshes or something, I don't wanna lose that. Uh, and then, uh, let's go ahead and style that. So up card, so they're up there, but I actually I want to do either up card. Each of these, let's do. Isn't it like that? Invalid property value. Oh, is it text size? Shoot. Why is it doing that? Oh, it's because it actually was font size and I forgot the X on pixels. Why is it not, oh, because it's not a button class. It's just a button. There we go, okay. I'm gonna copy that guy, I like that. This one's not quite right yet. I think I want, uh, oh, I think I need these to flex. go. 
Let's give them some margin too. Alright, not bad. I think I think I'm gonna get rid of this RoboFlow logo here, as much as I love our branding. So that looks like it's in the after. All right, so I've got this after element on the body that has our RoboFlow logo, but let's kill that guy. And then I don't think I copied this, but let's give this a little bit more space from the bottom. Yeah, let's put it above the FPS meter. Does it? All right, we're gonna go nuclear on this guy. I think whenever it's reading a frame, it's preventing me from editing that. So I'm gonna pause the script. And let's go copy this guy. Okay, and then I think so let's say the dealer up card is an ace. What happens if I put selected on these? Is there a default button styling for buttons? No. So let's do button.selected. Let's make it. Is that not blue? Oh, it's because my script is paused. Let's re enable that guy. Well, it's not pretty, guys, but it'll do. So basically, whichever one you select, I want it to turn blue. And then we're going to add some event listeners. OK. And actually, let's do um, All right, did I save all this stuff? OK. So. And class equals selected. All right, so we're going to start out with the ace selected. And then we're going to make it so that we can click on these and it'll make the other one selected. And then we'll get the value of it in our, in our code. So just to start with, we've got the a dealer has an ace. Oh, you know what? We should probably label what this is. Otherwise, users aren't going to know. Uh, let's see. What do we want here? Anything styling? No. No, screw it. Okay, so now the thing that needs to be flex is actually not that. Uh, 
and then I want I want that to be four pixels also. I think I want it to be white. Let's see. Hmm. No, well, neither of those things worked. Did I even? Oh, I forgot to save this guy. Uh, I think I need options to be with. Oh, it is. I think maybe I just hadn't saved the HTML. I think I need the parent also. Dealer up card still needs to be 100. There we go. Okay, so we've got our dealer up card UI, and now I wanna make this next so that if I click these, it selects the right thing. Uh, I also want them to be a button. Cursor button. And then uh, let's do, let's see, in here. So this is just like when the page loads. Dealer up card button, click. All right, so anytime a button's clicked, let's unselect everything. And then, select the thing that we clicked. So this should just move my blue highlighted one through when I click on things. I think we gotta wait for the model to load actually too. I think where I put that callback. Okay, so now if I click on these, it actually moves it. I don't know why it's not changing the hand cursor though. I, I told it um, that the button should be cursor button. Is it pointer? Oops. There we go. Okay, and then I don't like that I actually had to wait for the model to load here. Well, maybe I didn't, maybe maybe it's just taking up 100% of the CPU. Okay, so that works. So then I now need to set the value. So it starts with an ace. And then I want to grab this value attribute when I click on the thing. And then let's just make sure that this is working right. reload the page over here and then we'll go over to our console and it should be when I click on one of these once the model is loaded because I think it's just using all my CPU loading up everything up into the GPU at the moment I should be able to click two set dealer up card to two set dealer up card to six three eight nine I don't like this hard zero. Let's also set something for if there's no predictions to like find a card hand. What is that? Cards dot length zero.
Let's make it find a blackjack hand if there's no cards on the, on the deck. Maybe we should also hide this UI until things are shown. Let's do that. So, all right, find a blackjack hand, card nine, card 16. Okay, that works. Uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna hide this real quick. Where display none, and then once it loads, uh, where was that in here? There we go. So we're gonna remove, remove the loading class and show the dealer up card UI. So now if I refresh the page, that won't show up until the model has loaded. So I didn't like that it was showing up, but that I couldn't click on it because the CPU was fully occupied. All right, so now I think we've got all the information that we need to implement this. So we've got our hard or soft total, which is coming from our webcam and then getting parsed through the model. And then we've got the dealer up card, which we put a UI at the bottom to, uh, to show that and let the user select what the dealer has. And then I think we need actually something else for pairs too. Uh, but let's do, let's ignore pairs for now. This says pairs are listed on the back of the card. Actually, let's search for that because I don't even actually know what you're supposed to do for pairs. I think it's just you're supposed to split. Maybe is there a better one of these that includes pairs? I think this is better because now we've got, so if our hand is a soft or a hard anything or soft anything, or if we're gonna split. So we wanna split if we have a pair of any of these. Oh no wait, PH, what does PH mean? P, is there a key for this? I assume this is hit. Stay. I don't know what the heck this means. Maybe in the comments ever read a blackjack strategy hand? Why is there not a key for what these things mean? Uh, here. Always split ace cards. Forbidden to split F cards. Hit, stay. Double split, soft, hard. Okay, I think I actually understand this one. Aces and eights, don't do four, five. Split versus dealer low card. Okay, double down, double down. Hit stay. Okay, so these ones, these ones we can only do if we have two cards. We can split or double down sometimes. These ones we can hit or stay based on hard or soft and the dealers. Card. Okay, I'm gonna save this one to this directory. Um, just so I can have it open alongside my code. So I don't think we need any of this anymore. Let's go ahead and open our strategy PNG. Okay, so let's, um, we're gonna do a function here for what we should do.
this all our variables. We got our cards, we got our soft is paired, total card, total number is blackjack, busted, soft. Okay, and then, so, action. We're gonna need to do Only if you have a pair or it's a soft or hard something. So then we just need to implement determine action. And let's grab. Oops. <laughs> we use total in our frame rate calculation too. Let's change that to like total FPS, just so that we don't have any unexpected stuff if we're changing that same variable. All right. So determine action. We'll create a function down here. So if is blackjack I'm gonna return you win busted I'm gonna return you lose okay so these ones only are gonna come into play if you have two cards so if cards dot length equals two then determine if we should double down or split. If not, so if, if we should, we'll, f we'll flow through there and we'll return. So otherwise, it means we shouldn't double down or split. So then we're gonna determine if we should hit or stay. And so then we should do if soft, we should do certain things, and if hard, we should do certain things. Okay, so hard What do we do if we have like a We do if we have like a five, like a two and a three. Should we always hit? I guess we should always hit because we can't. Because if you okay, I see. So if you have anything less than eleven, you should always hit because you, there's no possibility of going bust. The only thing that can happen is that your card gets your hand gets better. Um, okay, so if we have a hard something less than a twelve. We should always hit. And if the dealer has, oh, here we need the dealer card too.
which we set as a variable up here to dealer up card. Okay, so otherwise, let, let's do, so if, if the dealer has anything less than a seven, but not an ace, and what do we do for value of ace? That's always 11. Okay, so if value of, oh no, what do we, what do we call this? Get value card. And it, we're, remember, we're stripping off the suit. So in order to convert from like a two to a two of diamonds, let's just always say the dealer's up card is, is a diamond. In fact, well, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. So if the dealer's up card, the value of the dealer's up card is less than seven. So that means, so we're, we're on hard down here. Anything less than a seven, we're talking about this then we should only hit if our value is 12 and theirs is a two or a three. So if our value, so that'd be total is 12 and dealer up card two or three, then we want to hit. Do we put periods in here? No, so we want to return a period at the end to tell them what to do. Okay, so return hit here. Otherwise, return stay. I forgot a parenthesis here. Okay, so I think I've got everything to the left, like this, this left half of here. So now otherwise, that means their value is higher seven, uh, is, is seven or higher. So if ours is less than 17, we should hit, otherwise we should stay. So 17 or higher stay, 16 or lower hit. Okay, so I think that checks off this entire bottom part. So now we need to look at soft. So for soft, if, if we're less than 18, we should hit. If we're greater than 18, we should stay. And if it is 18, we should only, so if dealer, oh, we want value of. So then if the dealer is less than an eight, we should stay, otherwise hit. So less than eight, we're on 18, stay, otherwise hit. Okay, so I think we've got these bottom two done now. So now we need to determine when we're gonna double down or split, which is when our card length is two. So let's see, what's a good heuristic for this? Okay, so we can only double down if, it's, if there's a pair. So, or we can only split if there's a pair, I guess. Is pair. And otherwise we might wanna double down. 
Okay, so double down. So pair of what? So the, the pair of what is cards zero dot CLS. No, that class. And then get value card. No, we don't want the value of the card. We just want to remove, we want suitless. Okay, so that's just, that's gonna drop the suit of it. So now we know we have a pair of whatever. So, two, three, four. So if it's an eight or an ace, we should always split. Otherwise, we should only split, uh, if it's a four, five, or 10, we shouldn't do anything here. So I guess we should do, let's just do if two, three, six, Seven, eight, nine. Oh no, wait, we already had eight. So two, three, six, seven, nine. Then we only want to split. So if that, well, if, if what we have a pair of is included in that list and Dealer up card is, oh, we want the value of that one now this time, is less than seven. Then we want to split. Okay, so I think that covers this entire top part. So now we just need to determine whether we're going to double down. So this has two different ones for if it's hard or soft. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if it's a hard, okay. Let's do the bottom one first. So if it's soft, so that's this guy. Then if the dealer has a Two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this is 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 13 through 18. Well, let's just do 13, 14, 15, 16. No, wait. 13, 14, 15, 16, yeah. So that's these guys. Then I only want to double if the dealer has a five or a six. So that's got these ones. So then otherwise, if I have a 17 or 18, soft 17 or soft 18, and their value is less than a seven. Okay, so I think that gets this whole chart. So otherwise, if I have a hard nine, 10, or 11, then I wanna 
do if it's less than a seven. So hard nine, hard 10, hard 11. So if I have a 10 or an 11, then I want it a 10, it should be if they're less than a 10. And otherwise, if I have 11, I should always double down. All right, so I think I've now individually gone through each one of these from the thing. My determined action should return what I'm supposed to do. So let's go back over here and refresh our page and see if it's telling us the right thing. And let's actually have our thing pulled up at the same time, just so we can see if we're telling them to do the right thing. Okay, so we've got a hard 16, which means down here, hard 16, and they have an ace up. We should hit. So let's say instead that they have a two up, then we should stay. Okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this out so that I can click things. Let's see. So let's give them an ace again. 16 hit, I hit, now I've got an 18, and they have an ace up. I should always stay, so it shouldn't matter what I click here, I should always stay. Cool, that works. All right, let's deal me a new hand. Hard 17, always stay. Hard 15, and the dealer has an ace, so I should hit. But if I change them to, oh no, dealer has a seven. Oh yeah, I should still hit. Okay, so if I change it to a six. Hard 15, dealer has a six. I should stay. Cool. Let's, let's actually put them back to a seven. So I should hit and then hit. I'm at 24. I bust and I lose. Okay. So I've got an ace. Oh, I've got blackjack. Sweet, that worked. That was the first time we tested that. But let's instead, let's do something soft so we can test these. So I've got a soft 15. Dealer has a seven. So soft 15. Oh, I should always hit on soft 15. Oh, soft 15, double down, ace and a four. Ace and a four with a dealer and a six. Okay, so also five, yep, but four and eight. Okay, okay, it's working. So soft 15 hit. Now I've got a hard 15 down here. So I should, they have an eight showing, so I should hit, but if I change this to a four, I should stay, okay. So let's put it, Let's hit. I've got a three, hard 18. I should always stay. All right, cool. Well, it looks like this is working. Um, I will go ahead and uh, clean this code up and put it on GitHub. Um, and then when we republish this video, um, I will put a link so that you can try this out yourself. Uh, this was pretty fun. Uh, I'm glad that you guys all stuck with me uh, while I uh, went through and was uh, figuring this out right alongside with you. Hopefully this shows you um, kind of how fun and easy it can be to build a computer vision project, uh, warts and all. Um, this is the first time that I did this project uh, live right in front of you. So hopefully you learned a lot uh, and, and had some fun and maybe this gave you some other ideas. Uh, if you liked this uh, exercise, please leave a comment below and give us a like and a subscribe. 
Uh, if enough people enjoyed this, um, maybe I'll spend some more Sundays doing some live streams and showing you what else we can build with all the cool projects on Riboflow Universe. Um, so until next time, uh, really appreciate you stopping by and uh, have a good one.